So you go on YouTube looking for a softbox lighting solution, but every single YouTuber has this massive YouTube studio and they have these massive softbox domes that take up so much surface area and so much space. But maybe you're in a situation like me who have small rooms inside the house or a living room set up or something like that, but they still want to have a small form factor, small footprint softbox lighting solution for that small space. Well, today I got a possible solution for you. I've been using it for about two months now, and uh, I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about these products. So again, my name is Squidhead Joe. Welcome back to the fish tank. What the softbox we're going to be looking at is the 26 or 65 centimeter selling softbox lighting solution that you can find on Amazon. I'll put the price on screen. And then we're going to be using the newer CL60B, which is a handheld uh, bicolor 60 watt light that you can use and in this the bicolor goes from 5600 kelvin to 3200 kelvin so you have those color temperature ranges obviously it's not going to be as bright as just let's say a 5600 kelvin uh light source but again you have you have that color temperature range me personally i always have my lights around 3600 kelvin because i think it looks best with my skin color that's just me you can use whatever you want or just go ahead and get one that's at 5600 kelvin again it's up to you now with the selling softbox that I mentioned for you previously you have to get a honeycomb shaped uh, grid if that's what you want to me it diffuses the light a little bit too much for what I want to do because sometimes I want to do top-down footage and having that light source being uh, more angled the light with the honeycomb it just makes the the shadows on the desk stand out more and it doesn't really light me in this fast open space the way I like it. So I don't use the honeycomb grid, but there is a video on YouTube where somebody used this settlements box. This is where I got the idea from. So you can watch that video. I'll link it down in the description. With that being said, this setup is quite small. I think that is really unique how you actually unfold the softbox and you can uh, make sure that the softbox collapses securely and easily and fast. And you can just put it in one of those uh, carrying bags that it comes with and it's actually very small as you can see it fits great on person just to put it over your shoulder and take it on the go with you if you need to i think that this softbox at the at the size that it is able to collapse that easily and be able to go is really good i know there's some other competitive softboxes out there from like aperture or um, even newer has their own but the newer one you have to have the little straps and pretty much go in a circle and lift the straps up and lock it in place. But those uh, little tabs or wherever are plastic and there's a lot of people complaining about those breaking. That's why I didn't go with the newer uh, softbox or just stuck to the newer light. Now with the aperture, obviously the tabs are not plastic. I think they're more metal, but again, that's extra work. Whereas this is just like an umbrella. You squeeze the thing in the middle, it, it collapses, you push it down or wherever and snaps into place and you're ready to go quick and simple. No taking a minute or two wherever this takes like a minute to push it down the other way takes about i would say like three minutes or so depending on how fast you can do it and again i think that this is nice and secure and i would think that more soft boxes in the future probably needs to adapt this method that's just my personal opinion um but with this softbox, again, I would suggest taking the grid off if you're going to do top down videos. If you're not and you're just going to be doing talking head videos, then, yeah, you can angle that light a little bit more with the honeycomb. But overall, I think I paid one hundred and like sixty something dollars. So I would say under one hundred seventy dollars. Um, if you're not going to get that grid, then you're going to be paying probably around one hundred and sixty dollars for this setup. And honestly, I think it's really good. The, the only thing that I would say is that with the softbox on this light it does become a little bit heavy so if you're going to use a tripod stand or wherever or a light stand for this uh, lighting solution i would definitely make sure that you have a very hefty or i wouldn't say very hefty i would say a somewhat beefy light stand or wherever so it doesn't fall forward if you have a cheaper light stand let's say from newer or something like that just lying around i would make sure to put some sandbags or something to weight down the bottom and then obviously have one of the legs that's sticking out to match the top of the light so the light if it's leaning forward or wherever it has that leg in the front um, and if you don't do it that way then obviously put some bags around it but I would suggest just doing it that way that's just my personal opinion you can do what I done and actually get these uh, the same kind of make of the tripod light stand 
but it actually attaches to your desk. I'll have those linked in the description as well to the products I'm talking about today. But um, I have it clamped to the desk. It does weigh down the light a little bit. So you got to make sure that you tighten the fixtures to the actual pole itself and make sure it's in there nice and tight pretty much. Um, but I would say that it still is going to give a little bit of weight. So just make sure you're careful to tighten the actual clamps that clamp to the light pole and um, that allows the light to maneuver up and down because uh, just be careful with it, but make sure they're tight just because those are our plastic, even though they're not the cheapest plastic in the world, it's still plastic. So you don't want that to crack or bust on you because I have yet to find a replacement to be able to fix the bottom or wherever that actually clamping mechanism because I've talked about my previous experiences with newer light fixtures and soft boxes like the ones that I've been showing throughout the video um, and I'll link that video up above as well so you can watch that in comparison to what we're talking about today but with those lights you have to be careful because um, like I said the man the the actual fixture that connects to the poles is like I said made out of plastic it's not the sturdiest or dual, like really durable, but if you could find a way to re get replacements for that or, you know, contact newer if it breaks or something like that to see if you can get a replacement for the bottom or something like that. But to my knowledge, I have not seen a replacement out there. Luckily, I have different newer lights or wherever that all have the same mechanism. So if this one happens to break on me, I can replace. But other than that, that's the only con. It's just that the softbox makes it a little bit heavier. If you are trying to get a bigger softbox than the one that was mentioned today, then I would suggest not going with this small light and going with something that's a little bit bigger because again the weight of the the, the actual dome softbox on this light and if you're trying to clamp it to the desk it like i have it won't work i i don't think it will or whatever this this method barely works so again if you're gonna get a bigger one and still try to use this 60 watt light then i would suggest going with uh, a actual beefy the light stand and not one of those cheap ones and making sure you put sandbags etc on that stuff do i like this setup yes i think 60 watts is good enough for this setup and for as you can see the lighting solution out here to the point to where uh, my key light is actually set on one i don't even really like need it too much or whatever not the key light but the the side light or whatever to fill i really don't need it i could just use it like this but just to brighten up a little bit and again trying to get rid of the shadows if i need a top down uh shot turning this light all the way up to 100 for me is it's not even necessary in my personal opinion a 60 watt light will be perfectly fine unless you're going outside and trying to fight some kind of other bright light sources then i would say maybe go with a 100 watt version if you can find a 100 watt small light like this um to use but as far as the money the, the value that you get out of it, like the effectiveness of it and the form factor having that small footprint. I think these tech tick off all the lighting solutions you would need. Um, I will link in the description uh, alternative um, that's probably just more feasible for a lot of people. And um, they're the Godox uh, ES45s. They are like the Elgato uh, key lights if you ever heard of them before but these are a little bit better. This is what, like I said, my fill light is. It has a little module that pops right off. As you can see, this is the name of it right there. And again, these get extremely bright. You've seen one in testing uh, scenario wherever, but it's just with lighting like this and trying to get really good soft light, nine times out of 10, you want ones that are uh, bigger. So the bigger the dome, the more light is shot into there, the double layer diffusion, especially in the Selens comes with double layer diffusion. Uh, a lot of them don't come with the double layer diffusion, but this one actually has two diffusion layers, which is another reason why I suggest getting this soft box. Obviously, it, the bigger the soft box is, the better the diffused light is and the better overall looking it's going to be. But you can achieve that with getting this a little bit closer like I have it. It's just an arm's length away. And on top of that, it's bright enough because I have it on 30% to where it's going to diffuse and give me that nice soft look that we're all looking for for doing talking head videos. The only con is that it's going to be a little bit heavy on a cheaper light stand. Other than that, I think this is the best situation that you can 
get as far as a combination of gear. Uh, this has just been my personal opinions. I purchased all these gear with my own money. So no companies have sent anything out for a review. I'm just reviewing it on my own. With that being said, the Godox lights are more for streaming in a small office or wherever. Obviously they're like the Elgato key lights, but these usually are around 100, I think 50 or $140, but I've seen them and I've purchasedly Per I personally have purchased one for my friend at a hundred dollars on B and H. And on top of that, um, they usually can, you can get a pack of two, which will cost you, I think 10 to $20 more than just one Elgato key light. And with that you, Elgato key lights, you need an app and a stream deck and all that stuff to record that, uh, to actually use it. And with this one, with the, uh, uh, Godox, obviously you have a little command module that pops off the back, but for the fill lights, these are great. I think, um, but as a main key light, I wouldn't really recommend it. Even if you got two of them, um, just because again, you want a bigger surface area for talking head videos for streams that's fine because most of the time your picture is smaller on screen sometimes you make your webcam huge but nine times out of ten most of the time when you're streaming or wherever it's small and you have other practical lights so with that being said that's just my thoughts and opinions about this setup hopefully you guys enjoyed your time in the fish tank and uh if you're wondering if you can use this for a youtube studio or live stream setup or anything that you need in a small space i say yes yes and yes just make sure that you are like I said, handling the light fixture correctly and being very tentative to it and making sure that you have the sandbags on if you are going to use a light stand. With that being said, all the products mentioned in today's video can be found in the description down below. And hopefully you guys enjoyed your time in the fish tank. My name is Ben Squidhead Joe. I'll see you guys in the comments. If anybody has any, I'll try to respond and take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. Deuces, everybody. Much love.